It's lunchtime again out here in the woods, and I'm going to be using an alcohol stove to cook my lunch today. But this is something different that I have not seen or heard a lot about until just recently. This is the X-Boil, the burner and the stand. If you're interested in hearing what the X-Boil is all about, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Leo at X-Boil for sending out the X-Boil uh, alcohol burner and windscreen so that I could share them with you. Leo not only sent these out, but he also sent out a brand new product that he is now making known as the X-Fire. A small collapsible wood stove and I thought I'd start with this I had heard of these but uh, outside of Europe I don't know just how popular they are well they should be and hopefully after seeing this video people will pick up on just how clever of design this is so Leo does reside in Bavaria Germany he makes all of these items in his home most of the materials are sourced locally sourced locally otherwise they're from somewhere else in Germany but they're all put to, assembled in Germany at, at his home and they're just clever simple and I think that's the way I'm going to refer to the stove, a KISS stove, a keep it simple, safe, and silent stove. You'll understand what I mean as we get going. Okay, what I thought I would do is just put this back in the pot that I carried it into the woods here in today, take it out and assemble it, and give you a few specifications as we go, and then of course I'll set it up to cook my lunch with. All right, so I put everything back inside of the pot that I'm using for this demonstration, and this is my 900 milliliter Tom Shoe titanium pot. I chose this today. I could have used something smaller. I couldn't have used anything much bigger. You'll understand as I go along. But yeah, there, everything that I need is inside of this, minus the alcohol. I don't carry my alcohol inside of my pots. It, if it ever leaks, you'll understand why. But let me just share with you where everything is. So inside of here is the burner. I feel safe putting it in without being in a plastic container, although it's probably a good practice to do so, either a little bag or something else to do so. This doesn't leak. I'll explain what I mean in a moment, but it doesn't leak, so I do feel safe. Just the same. It's probably a good practice to get into to put it in a plastic bag. The rest of it is on the inside wall of the stove. There it is. Now, so this is where things start. This is a stainless steel windscreen slash pot stand and it has a couple of unique features but first off let's assemble it so to start with you can see there is a couple of keyholes on one end that's the best way to describe it and a couple of little matching protrusions on the other end to put it together you just fold it in put it through and that's it that's all there is to to put this together now before i assemble the rest of it i just want to point out a few things first off these protrusions on top they are new to the design something that leo has recently added because before they were there the stove was designed to accept a pot that was smaller in diameter than the ring itself and i'll talk about the size of the ring in a moment as well and then, uh, based on customer feedback, he decided to create these protrusions on top because then you can use a pot larger than the size of this ring or a fry pan. It'll sit on top, give you sufficient clearance off of the top for exhaust. And yeah, it's just simple design, right? Okay, uh, let's have a look around the base. So there's the x boil insignia I guess you'll call it and you'll notice that there are no holes around the base on this side but if I turn it 180 degrees there's a series of holes around the base obviously you need some air being drawn into the uh, ring so that it will feed the alcohol stove from below but if you want to protect it from the wind there you just turn that side into the wind and you're good to go now there's another series of holes you can see two there and on the direct off their side two there those are Auxiliary holes is the best way to describe them. There is a set of clips I'm about to show you that will sit in the notches here, three notches, that allow you to set your pot just down inside, approximately a half inch down inside of the ring. But Murphy's Law, I'll probably lose one at some point, and if I do, then I can use tent pegs or skewers. Now, in fact, I actually brought a set of skewers with me just to demonstrate. I'm not going to be using them in, to cook my lunch, but if I lost one of the small clips that I'll show you, then you can always go this route. Now, if you ever do lose one of the clips, Leo will sell you some new ones as well to go along with it. This is simple though, right? So I just put those aside. Now let's bring the burner back in. 
And here's the burner. Now, it does have an elastic band around it. This probably won't be long before I lose that, so I'll probably get a Ranger band or something a little bit better to hold it on, because it's just a simple wick stove inside. That's all we have is a simple wick stove. These are the clips I mentioned. I'll talk more about those in a moment. This is graphite felt, not carbon felt, but graphite felt. I think virtually it's probably exactly the same thing or something very similar. Um, it's a little stiffer, a little firmer than the graphite or the carbon felt that I'm aware of. Uh, it's cut to fit inside and you'll notice that there's a little tiny notch right up there. Just a little, little, not even a half moon, quarter moon notch right there. Two things, I believe. One is it does allow the alcohol to soak in a little bit quicker, although it really doesn't need it there for that reason. But the other reason is so that you can pull, not with my big fingers, but maybe a little stick or a fork, I can pull the graphite out. Now, why would I want to do that? Because in, in addition to be an alcohol stove, you could take the felt out and use just the base for uh, something like a, a Nesbitt tablet or an alcohol gel or some gel fuel like that, if you wanted to use those as alternatives to using alcohol. And uh, yeah, how simple is that? A wick stove design. Now, the advantages of this, of course, are a couple. Number one, it lights up right away. There's no bloom time. There's no waiting for it to come to full heat and like a Trangia uh, is. Um, it will light better in cold weather because it's a wick stove. That's another one of the attributes of a wick stove. And uh, yeah, the last thing is it doesn't spill. If there's demonstrations, a little video running, and I've done this myself, as long as you don't put too much alcohol in it, maybe an ounce, if you light it up, you can turn it on its side and the alcohol will not run out and the flames will not run down onto the ground. That's what I meant about safe. So it's so simple. How simple a design is this? So simple, yet so safe. And as you'll hear, or not hear in a minute when I light it up, absolutely silent, which of course is one of the reasons I like alcohol stoves and I think most people like alcohol sto oh, stoves is because of their silent. A little bit slower, slow by comparison to a butane stove, uh, this is a little slower than a lot of alcohol stoves, but not by much, a minute or two. We'll talk about my testing with it. Last thing is, this cap is also the snuff ring. And because it's not a high pressure burner, you can sneak up, not sneak up, you can reach over it without risk of burning yourself and snuff it out. Wait a few minutes for it to cool off and you're good to go. All right, so I have those clips in my hand. Let me just demonstrate here. And then I'm gonna put it back up on the, on the ground and start my lunch. So here's where the clips go in. Uh, maybe I'll give you a close up. Little L-shaped clip bent back over on the top, and it's that where it's bent back over on the top that it clips onto the side of the windscreen slash pot stand. And like I said, about three quarters of an inch down from the top, you can see where they rest. And I'll give you a straight down from the top in a minute because if I tip it over too far, well, let's see. There you go. Okay, I was able to do it without losing the clips. So you can get a, a variety of size pots inside of this. Now this one, I can't get anything larger than 13 centimeters across, but I can go right down to 10 centimeters, which means a 750 mil titanium pot, or uh, maybe, even, no, not a water bottle. I think it'd be a little bit too small. Or a larger pot like the one I'm gonna be using today will fit in here. Let's just talk about sizes for a moment. I'm gonna give you the specs for this as well, but there are sizing, um, Leo makes a number of different sizes. Let me just go to my notes. I believe it's four different sizes. Yeah, now, if you go to Leo's website, and I encourage you just to explore it for no other reason, you take a look at them. You, what you find is that Leo makes these in different sizes to ad accommodate different size pots. So if you have a favorite cook pot that you want to take with you, then what you can do is you can choose the pot stand that's closest to its size. That way you get maximum efficiency, the lightest weight, um, and you know, you know you're going to fit. They'll have a range of pots that can fit with them, but it, the range isn't great. So it's not just one stand. You choose the stand according to the pot that you want to use. There's also two size ultralight stands. So there's even a lighter version of this. Not that this has a whole lot of weight to, to go with. And those little hooks that I showed you, these, are, these come in stainless steel and in titanium, so you can really build yourself an ultralight system. And even 
the burner itself. It is made of aluminum. I'll talk again about the specs in a second, but there's a smaller version of this. So you're really looking to minimize your kit. This is one of the larger kit setups. Not very large, is it? But this is, will accommodate some larger pots, like I said, 13 centimeters, but you can go much smaller if that's in fact what you want. Okay, why don't we go over a few specifications for this and then I will set it up and use it. Okay, of course, all the information I'm giving you now will be in the video description below. And since there are so many choices, it's relative to what it is you want to buy for yourself and use. But let's just start with the one I have. So this is the larger of the two burners that Leo provides. This burner is made from basically aluminum and the graphite felt. Pretty simple, right? And the size, it, well, the weight, let's just start with this. 0.7 ounces, 19 grams, 0.7 ounces. You know, vert, not weight less, but <laughs> very, very light in my opinion. 73 millimeters of uh, diameter and 22 millimeters high. The clips add another 0.4 ounces or 11 grams. The stand will is um, 1.6 ounces, where's my stand? My stand again is 1.6 ounces or 46 grams. It has a diameter of 140 millimeters or 14 centimeters and it stands 73 millimeters high. Now that's why I said a 13 centimeter pot because this is a 14 centimeter opening. 13 centimeters is about the largest pot that you're going to want to use in this. Now when you think of it, that's a good sized pot. The one I have is about uh, 12 centimeters, so you'll see what it looks like when I set it on. All right, those are the basic uh, specifications for this. I'm getting hungry, so let's set it up and I'll start my lunch. All right, let's get this thing going. So uh, what I'm going to do is just clear myself a little bit of space right here, get some of the duff off to the side. And uh, just for an extra element of safety, I'm going to put a piece of aluminum foil down. And um, again, alcohol doesn't spill out of this, but what I like to do this is for a couple of reasons. I think it's a little bit more efficient in terms of uh, reflecting heat back up towards the pot. And just to, as an extra precaution to make sure that we don't have any spills of alcohol that may cause us a problem. So there we go. Okay, there's the burner. Now... There are three alcohol bottles. This is the largest, the medium size, and the smallest. And it, you know, they, I'll put the measurements for each of the alcohol bottles in so you can determine you don't have to carry a full one if you're only going out for a day hike. I did, more for demonstration. But uh, yeah, if you're, you know, for this purpose, I probably only need about an ounce of, ounce of alcohol in this burner. But let me just pour a little bit in. And that's about maybe an ounce, maybe a little bit more. Really quite cool. Look at that. Nothing pouring out of it. And I think that's what one of the things that I like a lot about this is that it makes it safe to uh, because you're not going to have a problem. It is going. Okay. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is when I get home, I'm going to just try this in a dark room so you get an idea of what the flame pattern looks like because you're not seeing anything. In fact, I can't see anything happening here. But there is, in fact... A flame down there. Now, as I set this pot on, wipe the bottom off a little bit, just a one little note about choosing the pot. The gap between the bottom of the pot and the handles has to be, I think, what it is at uh, 19 millimeters, something very small. I'll put the, this will be in the information, of course, again. But I have another pot where the handles butterfly go right down to the bottom, and unfortunately, it won't fit with this. So you just make sure that you have some handles that are up a little bit there and uh, okay there it is that's all there is to it right that's all I have to do now and uh, wait for this to come to a boil so that I can start my lunch and uh, what I will do when we come back is I'm just going to give you a little information about the boil tests I've done with this burner. All right, in full disclosure, I recorded this segment a couple of minutes ago where my soup had heated up and I transferred it into the bowl. Um, but I forgot to turn the microphone on. So I wanted to show you what it is I had done. I put a little bit more water back in the pot, lit the burner back up, put it back on, let it heat up, because I just wanted to show you how you would go about snuffing the burner out. So take the pot off. I can see the alcohol burner down inside. You will need something to grab the, that with, but you really don't need anything to snuff it out from here. And there we go, it's snuffed out. The alcohol that's inside over time, it'll evaporate, but in the short term, it is, it's is—it's going to conserve the alcohol that is not burnt, and there'll still be some left when I go to heat some water up for my coffee. All right, so what I will do is my 
soup is cooling off, I will uh, eat my soup and then I have a few more comments to make on this setup. Tasty, but still a little bit hot. I'll give it a few more minutes to cool off. This uh, double wall Keith titanium bowl is keeping it plenty warm. Uh, just for anybody who's interested, my meal today is Herb's Worst. It's an experimental recipe that I've been working on for some time. I'm ready to make the video on it. I think I've got it down to a point where I'm ready to share the recipe I came up with. But basically, Herb's Worst it comes out of World War II Germany, and it... Uh, uses pea flour and back bacon to create something of a sausage. If that sounds a little strange, but I'll tell you, it makes a great meal and it keeps really well on the trail. It's kind of like uh, a different form of pemmican using basically different materials. Well, you'll see the video, watch for that video on Herbs Worst when I get there. But I just wanted to share that with you. That was my lunch today. All right, let me put that down, give it a, another couple of minutes to cool off. My burner and stand have also cooled off, and I just wanted to make a few more comments on this. Uh, okay, so the alcohol burner. One thing I didn't mention so far is the pot gap. So when this is sitting on the ground and you put the, the alcohol stand or the wind burner pot stand over it, the gap to the bottom of the pot from the top of the burner is 1.5 inches. And that's pretty much 1.5, 1.25, 1.25 inches uh, from the top of this to the bottom of the pot. And that's about ideal for an alcohol stove, at least in my testing. So I was glad to see that. Now, here's the one thing about using this, and you probably guessed already. How do you simmer a soup like the one I just made? This is really meant for all out. You light it up, you let it run. It runs a full blast, not as hot as some, some alcohol stoves, but still very hot. And how do you simmer that? Well, that's something I wanted to work on. I have some experimental ideas that I will want to share with you. I'm gonna open that up to you if you have any other ideas on how you can um, Create a simmer ring is the best way to demonstrate it. So let me show you the couple of ideas that I have. Now, I have used these and they do work, but rather than demonstrate them here, when I do the segment of this video at home where I can get to show you what the flame pattern looks like, I'll also show you what it looks like when I put my simmer rings on. So the first one is a simmer ring that I made out of the bottom of a pull top tuna can and this has appeared in other videos because it also works well on the Luxata siphon stove so it's exactly actually it is one of my Luxata siphon stove simmerines at least one of the early versions that I made and what I liked about this is it actually sits down inside look at that it sits down inside of the exboil burner perfectly in fact I can put the lid on fold over my little foil tab I can put the lid on and it stays inside there. So it's virtually perfect for this application. Again, I'll show you the flame pattern when I, when I do the segment at home. Uh, the other one I tried is, this is a piece of aluminum flashing. And uh, it's, it's, again, this was just proof of concept more than anything else because of the extreme light weight that I wanted to come up with. I cut a circle, cut a hole in the center. And when you lay this on top like this, it does exactly the same thing. It holds about the same size as the one in the other uh, simmering. And that works also. The only problem is it's not quite as compact. Now, yes, I probably could trim this down until it sits inside of the burner. In fact, I probably will. But um, you don't want it, how should I say, inside. I like it where it sits on top. So I'll probably store it maybe underneath in, inside of the pot or something, like, something along that. Just a couple of ideas for simmerings. I'll demonstrate both of these to show their effectiveness when we get it home. Okay, I really like this product. I was not aware of it. I had seen it reviewed in a few videos out of Europe, uh, out of the UK and a few other places, but I didn't even know if it was something I could get here in Canada. But when I reached out to Leo, um, I was actually looking for the X-Fire to test that out, which will come in a future video. But he sent this along and I said, you know, I'll give it a try. Now here is what was really nice. Leo sent both of these products along to me with no expectations of a review. He said, try them out and see if you like them. If you like them and you want to do a review, great. If you don't want to do a review, 
then uh, uh, that's okay with him as well. Well, Leo, I want to do a review of this, obviously. And I have been testing the X-Fire, and I have some really positive things to say about that as well. But this is what I reviewed first. Again, the things that I really like about it, ultra lightweight, ultra safe, ultra, what, what, ultra safe, ultra simple, ultra silent, maybe a little bit slow. And I'll, I'll give you the specs for that. Why don't I do that now? I'll give you the specs for this with an alcohol test I did at home. Because uh, you, may, you may be interested. It'll, it'll be in the video description well, of course. So I did a couple of tests with this, and I got about, this is the average of the tests. Two cups of cold water, 500 milliliters, one ounce of methyl hydrate, which is 30 milliliters. I used an 11 centimeter aluminum pop, which um, I, for, for the test of this, I got a boil of eight minutes and seven seconds. That's a little slow compared to some other alcohol stoves, but not unreasonable. And does it really matter when it's out here in the woods? Again, time is not the same relative. I'm not looking for how fast I can bring water to a boil. And the other thing is I ran it to run out just to see how long that one ounce of alcohol will run. And it ran for 10 minutes, 55 seconds. So just short of 11 minutes. So um, I like when you have a run out that goes a minute or two beyond the boil time because that will allow for the differences in environmental conditions. Uh, I was at a home temperature, a room temperature in my basement where I do my testing, but if I had been cold out here it would take a little longer so that gave me the leeway knowing that there was a little bit of more time before run out. Um, it's not bad testing again not very fast but fast enough and it does the job and once again lightweight simple safe and silent yeah those are all the things I like about this. Okay I've rambled on enough about it I will be putting the links to where you can take another look at the X boil in the video description as well as all the specifications for it and my testing what I'd open, like to do is open it up to you do you have any experience with the X boil do you have any comments or questions you want to make on it any suggestions for simmer rings other than the ones that I've already come up with please put those all in the comments section below but until next time get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference Bye for now. All right, quickly, I've got most of the lights turned off here in the room. Just one left to turn off when I light this up. Put a little bit of alcohol in the X-Boil. Maybe half an ounce or so. Like that. I have each of the two experimental simmer rings here. First, I just want you to see what it looks like as it gets going to see the flame pattern. Even though it lights up instantly and you start using it right away, there's no bloom time, it does get a little bit more intense as the container itself heats up and therefore heats up, heats up the alcohol inside. As you can see, it's doing now, it's a little bit more intense, which is nice. So I'm gonna start with the ring made from the flashing to show you what that looks like. It usually takes a second for that to calm down, but you can see that it has calmed down significantly, so that's one way of uh, creating a simmer ring. I'm not sure it's getting all the air it really wants. As you can see that puffing, we'll take that off. The other one is made from the bottom of the uh, tuna can. And I think what I like about this one better is that it doesn't puff like the other one did because there's air getting in around. Well, okay, it doesn't puff as much as the other one did. And it's definitely decreased the amount of flame. So uh, this is something that can be played with in terms of the diameter of the hole that you're going to allow the flame to come through. But as you can see, it's decreased it. So that is will provide you a simmer. And again, you can vary it according to what your needs are.